So when we last met, I showed you how to write a hello world character for character directly into the ROM. And while it worked and it was fast, it has drawbacks. It took up a lot of code space because there was one instruction for every character you printed. It's not easily edited. You can't change the string and print it again, see how it looks. In this video, I will show you how to implement a function to overcome those drawbacks. So stick with me as we jump back into the deep end of computing with the Yup 5108 virtual microcontroller. So here we are in the main screen uh, where we're actually looking at the microcontroller at the three different levels, the desktop view, the component view, uh, where this is our processor over here and the display and so forth, the actual internals of that processor box. As you can see, we're running around in a type loop in RAM or in ROM, printing out hello world over and over again. Like I said, last time we did the edit directly in ROM. I'm just gonna pause this and say, I wanna save an image. So we're gonna save this image, but we don't wanna overwrite the one that has all the fun and interesting stuff in it. So we're gonna name it the out file. And then we can bring that file up here. And you see it's a whole lot of numbers, hexadecimal numbers. And uh, you know, we knew originally these were the starting address of the program, uh, which is then at this location. And then we just say D148, D165. So, and so on. D1 is send the next byte out to the serial port. And then the next byte itself is the various characters. And that's once again given by looking up all of those characters in this ASCII table. So D1, 65, if we look up 65 in hex, is an E. So first was E148. So 48 in the hex table should be the capital H. And sure enough, it is. So as you can see, we pretty much just put them in character by character. Uh, that makes this really annoying and difficult to edit. And even in this mode where it's one big file, it's difficult to edit. And so what I've done is I, I created a language definition file that gives us some highlighting. But we can also write this out like this. We put the address and then the bytes we want to put out at that starting at that address. Assembly grid shows us what assembly instruction is given by what numerical instruction. So a no op is zero, zero. And in this case, our instruction that we're looking at is W1E. Over here, W1E which is D, and it's easier to see down at the bottom, D1. It's kind of like playing uh, old school uh, uh, battleship, if you will. And that converts the instruction, which would be an assembly instruction, into the machine instruction, which is the D1. At some point, we'll have an assembler. In the meantime, <laughs> we still have to put it out character by character. That'd be the equivalent of the C function put character or put C, where we say we want to put the capital H out somewhere, usually on standard out. Standard out would be the screen. So we see this assembly uh, instruction. We're actually kind of doing this in a mixed mode. This mode is, uh, this line is the equivalent C, uh, what you would write in C minus the semicolon would be needed, but most other languages don't. Uh, then you see the assembly instruction that we'd be writing. And then we see the actual machine instruction. So we're basically doing all the steps of a compiler going from C to assembly and an assembler going from assembly to machine language. But we have to do those manually. So here's where we print our uh, one character at a time where we just put out each individual character, H, E, L, L, O, all the way down until we get to the bottom. And right now we can make this next instruction one of two things. If we make it zero, zero, it's a no operation as shown by our table. No op is zero, zero. Or we can make it the halt instruction, which is the next one down, one, one. 
So if we make it the halt instruction, we can actually see how many instruction cycles it takes to just print hello world one character at a time. Now it's not just going to take one instruction cycle per instruction. Each instruction takes a different number of instruction cycles. It's the nature of a complex instruction set machine. So we're going to put the halt there. Then after it finishes, we're going to have it jump off, not back to the start where we did there. This is the jump instruction. I think we covered this last time. The jump instruction is 8-0 if we're jump short, meaning jump to just the next 8 bytes or 8 bits, not jump 16 bits. So originally this was 08 and I just caused it to sit in a loop going around and around. Here we're going to cause it to jump down here to where we uh, are actually going to print. It's not 50 that we want, we want 40. That would make things go strangely. So we saw, saved that file. Now, luckily, the Logisim version that we're using uh, doesn't really care about all of this empty, empty lines, empty white space. Anything after two blank characters is ignored on a line. We don't need a comment character for every line that we don't want to actually write to memory. So only the lines here in this sort of lightish blue are the ones that write to memory. In the, uh, everything else is thrown away when we do the load. So we have, we're going to print it that, that way once, where we print one character after another. Then we're going to go from here down to 40. And 40 is going to load up address 50, which is the beginning of this string of characters. These are all just in memory, um, one after the other. So we're going to start with that by putting that into the DR register, DR register being this guy, the data register. So we're going to say this is where we want to start printing characters. In our actual uh, print function itself, uh, where we start the actual copy of bytes, we're going to read a character using this location. We're going to read a character from the EEPROM, which was pointed to by this character, this number. Then we're going to say, was that character a zero? And if it's not a zero, we're going to keep looping around printing more things. If it is a zero, we're going to stop the halt instruction. So we're going to basically go through here, look at this first character, print it, next character, print it, all the way until we hit this zero. This zero is at the end of your string is one of the biggest headaches in the C language that ever existed. Because if this isn't a zero, then you just keep running through your code. You say, oh, it's not a zero. Oh, 76. Let's print that and print a 50, whatever that happens to be. And then maybe you eventually run into a zero and you stop printing excess stuff. So we're going, when we load this back up, it's going to print hello world once, then halt. We'll be able to see how many clock cycles that takes to do it that way. Then we're going to have it jump off to printing it in a loop, printing one character at a time through this, and then finally stopping. And that's going to then hit and halt instruction. And we'll see how many clock cycles that takes. And of course, it's the same number of characters, so that we can do a little math and figure out which one is more efficient. We have that already and saved. Load this image back up. Of course, we don't want the out version. We want the in version. We can double check. So at address 20, we have this instruction 11. And that's a quick way to verify that we're all ready to go. Because there it is again. So now we're going to pop back up one level, reset the simulation. This counter, which is counting every single time the clock pulses, is reset to zero. And now if we say simulate and run it as fast as we can, there we go. Printed hello world in 65 cycles. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, so 12 characters took 65 cycles. So we got uh, 65 clock cycles divided by 12. So there was a number of instructions that we went through before we got to the beginning of the program. And uh, we can find out how many that is uh, by going back 
into the lowest view. Replace this D1 with an 11. To reset. And since we were already still running, we immediately ran to that first instruction. And that took up 17. So there's 17 instruction cycles before we start actually pro writing Hello World out to the screen. We can actually set this back to D1. Reset. We're back to a single Hello World print. And that was 65 cycles. 65 minus the 17 startup cycles gives you 48. Divided by the 12, four instruction cycles per print. And like I said, different instructions in the Cisc architecture are going to take different numbers of instruction cycles. So even though you have a gigahertz machine, if all you were doing with a gigahertz machine was printing a low world like this, you'd be running at a maximum of one fourth of that gigahertz. That's why it's so important to have the five and six gigahertz machines. If you really want to run at a gigahertz on an Intel processor, you need the extra clock cycles just to get the instructions done on the RISC processors. Uh, the ones that were Solaris and Sun and PowerPC, um, those have one instruction cycle per instruction most or most instructions, not all. So that was our first run through. Let's go ahead and clear the count. Now we're going to tell it to continue going. It's going to skip over that, that halt instruction, keep, uh, jump into printing hello world in a loop. And you can see already it's somewhat slower and actually took 464 cycles. So 464 cycles divided by the 12 characters. And there was also the jump that was involved there. So anyway, it's fairly number, a larger number of cycles per character. The big difference is I can immediately and fairly instantaneously decide that I don't want to print hello world anymore. And I want to say hello worlds. Right? Save that. Reload it. Notice that one just changed right there if you're watching closely enough. We'll go back to the desktop view. Reset. There's our first hello world. Tell it to go. Hello worlds. So the trade-off in performance, obviously, is made up for in the ease and convenience of changing it. And obviously, it would be even more interesting if we made the the uh, string of characters longer. And we certainly can. We have hello worlds and we actually have everywhere between five zero and well the next thing up is one hundred. One zero zero. So we've got a fair amount of space. Let's see. Well we need a space character and it's just easier to type twenty for the space character. Hello worlds There we go. Hello worlds from YouTube. Save it off. You can see we have some more characters down here. Reset and go past the hard coded hello world. We get hello worlds from YouTube. Yay, worked the first time. Ain't it a beautiful thing? We wanted to make this into a fully fledged function so that we can actually call multiple uh, print multiple strings. And luckily there's not a whole lot different that we have to do. It's just in here we said we wanted to jump to location 40 and cause execution to continue from there. And instead of a jump we want to call it like a function call. And that function call instruction would be the call long so 96 is the call command and so we'll go 96 it's going to jump down here to 40 run through all of 40 this is where we stopped last time 
And instead of stopping, we want to return from this function back to where we were, the return from the long uh, call, which is 97. So instead of halt, we want to return. Now we have some longer lines that I've already put in here. These are actually the first few lines of the script that I said mostly correctly earlier. So we're going to turn our little monitor here into our own little teleprompter, if you will. Hello folks, future me here. While I'm editing this, I realize I have something on the order of two hours worth of source material. And uh, I've only gotten through about a half hour of it, cutting that down to about 15. And so I think that's probably about it for this one. We're going to continue this in a part two, maybe a part three, as I cut down what we did on live stream into more manageable pieces. So if you like what you're seeing, if you want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe, ring the bell so you know when we release the next two, and we'll be seeing you.